Okay, everybody, it's Terry, and I'm back. And if you all missed uh, the video that I just made a few minutes ago, my live uh, revealing of this plant, I'll post it, the link somewhere in the corner. But I am continuing on with that live. Um, this is my new Angricum infundibulare, which I've given some information on in the other video. You can always refer back to that video if you missed it. But it's a Madagascan species, um, a vining type species similar to Ipleriana, it's similar to um, Biramense, it's also similar to Figuiere, it's similar to Ionella. Um, it's, it's, there's a lot of Ambricums that are like this. It's actually similar in growth pattern to a vanilla vine, if you're familiar with that. Whereas the taller that it gets, there will be aerial roots coming from the sides, which will benefit if they have something to grab onto, whether it's a tree fern pole or something. At the same time, these are very slow growing, as most Angricums are. So I am starting out with this, this mount, and I am going to add addition of a little bit of sphagnum at the base, and in hopes that as it grows taller, it will grab a hold of the mount and will be able to maintain adequate moisture in the roots that way. Otherwise, as I said, the plant will not live. It, it will just not live if those roots do not survive. Um, it will just be a slow death. Um, so I'll just go ahead and get with the unpotting. These came from Botanica, which is out of Montana. Yeah, Masula, which I believe I I would say they are pretty much the only, uh, well, there are a few places, but this is probably one of the few places where they specialize in anthropoids. And they have their own breeding program, maybe not their breeding program, but they have their own uh, seed, seed and uh, blasting program. Um, so I am just gonna try to tease some of this little bark, this little seedling bark off of the roots as much as I can. Uh, being particularly careful not to damage the roots. If it is too much of a pool, then I'll just leave it on there. A few little pieces here and there won't do any harm at all. You can always pull them off later, and chances are when you start to water it on the mount, those little pieces of bark will just fall off anyway because there's nothing really holding it to the roots um, so yeah so this is the plant hopefully this is in in focus I'll just assume that it is before I go into that before I put it on the mount it's just gonna be a simple thing like that what I want to do is I want to give you a little bit more information of course this is my Bible that is falling apart this is the name of it illustrated encyclopedia of orchids and when I go to the Ingracum section, this is one of the reasons that I find this book to be the premier book, besides the fact that it is a large book and it has color pictures and lots of descriptions. It also gives um, lots of information, the, the cultural information, it gives where it comes from, it gives the who discovered the plant in the year. Um, there's just lots of information in this book. But if I can pick it up and go over to Infundibulare, which is uh, right down here where my thumb is, that is what the flower looks like. And the description, if you can see that, uh, it's just above to the left, of the Germanianum. It says that it's from tropical Africa, from Nigeria. Island of Principe, epiphytic with long branching stems, pendant, rather similar to Icleranum, much larger flowers, funnel shaped green, white lip. And there's the flower, as I said, there where my thumb is. Okay, so let's get this mounted up. And so we can move on. Hopefully, everyone is gearing up for the weekend. It's fourth weekend. It's just nice to, uh, well, you know, it's a Saturday, we're always, I'm always off, so. But it's nice to uh, 
you know, it's nice to kind of be, feel patriotic, especially in times like this, very important. So I put some sphagnum, hopefully you're catching this because I'm not really looking, but I am just put, put a little layer of sphagnum at the base of the plant, which is where I'm going to line up at the base, no, at the base of the mound, I'm sorry, which is where I am going to put the moss, being careful not to extend that moss up too far. Although, if there were a, a moss pole, one of those tree fern poles behind it, I, when I had, uh, not this plant, but I had a beer men say, my old beer men say I had a tree fern pole, but I supplemented that tree fern pole with sphagnum by wrapping it around it so it was really thick. And that plant really loved it because the sphagnum was right up against the plant and the roots just went directly back to the to that. Despite the sun being this way, the roots went back towards the sphagnum, which was fantastic, but unfortunately it got too cold. Uh, that winter that I lost my green, my um, heater. But that's another story, I'm sure you've heard that before. But let me get my string and I'll tie this up real quick. So, Really, I'm just going to try to do this as tight and secure it to the moss. Even a little bit at the end to tie it up, tie the ends up. And I'm going to do this very lightly. It just moved on me, but yeah, I'm draping it very lightly. I mean, it can wiggle a little bit on the mount, but as soon as those roots get into that moss and in turn gets to the wood all will be well so again I'm tying this loosely just to get it on the mat trying not to disturb it so much although it is not blooming size so there really is no risk of setting the plant back because it is just a seedling as I've been saying. These get very large. Uh, yeah, and that's actually all that I'm going to do. I'm going to, well, you know what, I'm going to maybe secure it underneath. So it can still move about, and I'm not wrapping it so tight. Kind of like how you would do a new growth that you're trying to straighten up rather than let it grow floppy. And so that's, that is pretty much it. You can see that the sphagnum is at the bottom of the mound. Roots are draped over it. There is really no sphagnum covering roots. So I will, as it wets and the roots are allowed to grow, if they grow, hopefully they'll grow, fingers crossed, the roots will grow down into the mound, into the mound, through the, through the moss, into the mound, yeah. And also as the plant grows up, it will have the mound to secure any roots, aerial roots that come out from the sides. And of course, as I said before, this is my Angracum infundibulare. Thanks for watching, folks. Enjoy your orchids. Bye.